Ladies and gentlemen, friends and wrestling fans, I'm Captain Solomon, and the Royal Rumble is this Sunday. Absolutely my favorite pay-per-view. So, with that being said, I'm here to make my predictions for every match, including the pre-show, for Royal Rumble 2018. Also, with the uh, the men's and the first ever women's 30-man over-the-top battle royal match, uh, I am going to be picking who I think the first entrant will be, who the last entrant will be, who the last person eliminated is, and who the winner is. That's for each one of those. Just a little fun I'm going to have with it. Uh, the odds of any of that being right, short of maybe the winner, probably pretty slim. But, you know, that's what we do here. We have fun. We take risks. I, I don't take risks in my life. Anyway, let's get right to it. Uh, so... There's three matches talked about right now for the pre-show. Uh, that first one being uh, Bobby Roode versus uh, anybody. It's supposed to be a like a U.S. U.S. Open Challenge for for his title type thing uh, on the pre-show. Um, this could be where Dolph Ziggler uh, shows up. I'm claiming that he's also the United States Champion because he never actually said that he was relinquishing the title. He just put it down and left. So that's what I'm thinking that maybe Dolph Ziggler shows up here. Um, if not, I think he's going to show up in the Rumble match. Uh, but we'll get we'll get to that prediction later. Um, so no matter who it is, I think Bobby Roode wins it. Um, the, the only one that would really make it possibly go either way would be if it is Dolph Ziggler. But I feel like they're going to move Dolph Ziggler away from the United States title in one way, shape, or form. Uh, then after that, you got the good brothers of Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson... Uh, I guess Balor Club, if you will, going against the Revival, which is Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder. Uh, shame to see the Revival getting used this way right now. They just came back from a lot of injuries that have been going on and plaguing their WWE career. But they're really good talents. Nobody cuts the ring off like they do. Uh, it's just they're wrestlers, as they said in a promo that I think hurt them more than helped them, surprisingly enough. Because Vince McMahon doesn't like when you call yourself a wrestler when you're in, you know, WWE because you're an entertainer. That's what he wants to do. So, uh, I, I think in the end here we're going to see the win go to Anderson and Gallows. Uh, just the, the, him, them and Finn have been on a good rise, and I kind of want to see them get into the title picture at some point. So, uh, I don't think... I don't think that they're going to lose to the Revival. The Rev Revival's going to get some sort of... Um, push if you will at some point i just don't think it happens here especially in a pre-show so uh and then for the cruiserweights their uh match for the night uh especially given the whole enzo more thing um we've got a six-man tag match uh with kalisto uh it's kalisto grandma Delique, and uh lindsay arado versus tjp gentleman jack gallier and drew gulag um, I kind of want the bad guys to win this one, but they probably won't. Um, you know what? As much as I like Grand Metalik, I do like Grand Metalik. Um, I'm going to go with TJ. You know what? No, because TJP has been crying a lot lately, and that's kind of his shtick. So, no, they'll probably lose. The bad guys are going to lose here. I'm going to give it to the Team Lucha. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give it to them uh, in, in a match that most people, again, I'm probably one of the few people that even watches the pre-show anymore. So... Uh, you know, we'll go with that. All right, next we're going to go with the uh, the Usos, Jimmy and Jay Uso going against uh, Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin, uh, American Beta, if you will, uh, in a two out of three falls for the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. Uh, if you know anything uh, about the outside of wrestling, you know that one of the Usos, it was Jay, I believe, Jay Uso got pulled over for a DWI uh, at one point. And I was saying before that I think this is going to uh, hurt them in the long run, and we might see the titles get pulled off of them. If so, this would be the match to do it. However, that being said, I feel like maybe the crowd isn't behind Gable and Benjamin enough. So I'm thinking maybe I'm, – I'm hoping for like a 15 to 20-minute match. Like I'm, I'm wanting this match to get time because it deserves it. And if it does, if it does get that amount of time, you could see the titles change hands. However, for the sake of this video, 
I'm going to keep the belts on the Usos, and uh, maybe after this they feud with, I don't know, maybe we get uh, the War Machine tag team coming in, or perhaps just the Bludgeon Brothers. Uh, but some sort of, you know, uh, we've had a lot of high-flying stuff, now maybe they'll put them against some powerhouses and see how they fare to freshen things up. Um, but I won't be surprised if uh, the titles change hands in that match. I won't be surprised overall. But I will be incorrect in my guesses, so I guess we'll take that. Uh, then after that, we're going to go over the Raw Tag Team Championship match. It's uh, Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan, the Tag Team Champions, going against the bar. <laughs> going against the bar, uh, which is Sheamus and Cesaro. Um, I think the titles are changing hands. Uh, I think we're going to finally get the full heel turn of Jason Jordan here. Uh, especially, they, they planted the seeds, if you will, with that knee to the face that he caught from Seth Rollins. Now it's the time to cash in on that. Uh, this can build into a match between those two that I think would be actually a really competitive match at the Royal, or, um, sorry, at either Elimination Chamber or WrestleMania, depending on how far they want to push out this little feud. Uh, I think it would be a good match for them since they can't do the Dean Ambrose thing that they were probably going to do anyway. This would be still a nice little little storyline that they could do that I think I think would be entertaining, in my personal opinion. I've liked the build so far. So, uh, yeah, I think the Bar are going to pick up the tag titles. They can move on and, and, you know, work with other tag teams. I mean, it'll probably be Titus Worldwide for now, but maybe we'll get some more teams here in the future. So, yeah, I think the Bar are going to pick up the win there. Uh, after that, we've got AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn in a two-on-one handicap match for the WWE Heavyweight Championship. I like what they've been doing. I'm pretty sure that AJ is winning. It's my pick. That's my prediction, if you will. I think AJ Styles is going to win it. Uh, I think the reason that they they really worked Kevin Owens' leg, uh, I think that's to shield like an actual injury he does have. There's rumor that he's been working through injury for a while now. So I think that maybe this is like, so they have more of an out for him, for them losing, because he's injured and stuff like that. So he's going to be favoring that injury a lot more. You're going to see a lot more of Sammy and AJ going at it, which is probably why they've been doing that lately. And I'm still kind of okay with that, because they've been putting on good matches. And Sami Zayn, honestly, I've liked... Even though I've, I've heard rumor it's tough for him because he's so used to being the babyface, I've liked the heel turn. I've kind of liked that he's still kind of got that peppy, upbeat attitude, but now he's just on the wrong side, if you will. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick AJ because it makes the most sense logically, uh, and I think it's going to lead. That ties in with another one of my choices. Let's go with that. Uh, and then we get to the most predictable, personally, in my, my opinion, the most predictable match of the night. You've got the... Brock Lesnar versus Kane, okay, and Braun Strowman, all right, so it's a triple threat match for the universal title, Brock Lesnar's going to win this one, Kane is going to take the pinfall because we can't let Braun Strowman look weak, Brock Lesnar needs to keep the title because I believe Roman Reigns is going to be going against him at WrestleMania, it's been the rumors since, like, last year pretty much so it's probably happening so i don't see him although it'd be a lovely swerve i would love to see them drop the title onto uh to braun Strowman right now out of nowhere like that would be kind of surprising but i can't see him doing it they're not going to do that to brock his his, his contract ends uh, after wrestlemania so what will probably happen is he'll lose at wrestlemania and then go off back to the ufc that's that's my personal guess but we'll see how that plays out uh all right so then, now, we get to the fun stuff. We're going to start with the first ever Women's Royal Rumble match. And I'm super excited about this. However, I'm not excited that Stephanie McMahon is going to be on commentary at ringside. Um, as long as she doesn't sit there talking, like about how amazing this is for sports and women in sports because like tennis has been doing it forever and like the you're not that groundbreaking here but i'm glad you're doing it i'm super glad that the women are getting treated with more respect now but you're not that big of a deal <laughs> the, the women have earned this let them have their time um there's rumor about somebody showing up we'll get to that um we'll start with who i think is going to be the number one entry and this is more so how I'd book it, not so much what will probably happen, but if I got to pick, and since I am making a pick, I'm going to say Bailey 
Bailey needs to be the first one out. Now, there's a reason I say that. She, I do not. They may want me to forget, but I do not forget when she was afraid to use a kendo stick against Alexa Bliss. Okay, I don't forget when she was like getting like trounced on during that kind of like situation. Lately, they've been building towards Bailey being more, you know, ferocious, more a little more competitive. I think if she enters at number one and survives like to the final four, that is uh, a really good push for her character. Uh, have her get almost thrown out a few times, but just her will to win this, to, to, to strive, is still there, so she, like, you just won't let go. Um, I think that would be a, a hell of a story to write. I'm not sure if they're gonna do that. Uh, also, I think at some point during this rumble, and this is just kind of a bonus statement, we'll see if I'm right here, I think Stephanie McMahon is gonna have an entry number. I don't know why, I just think it's actually gonna happen. Um... She usually only seems to take one bump per year, and this could be it. This could be the moment, um, but we'll see what happens with that. Uh, I think the number 30 entrant is going to be Ronda Rousey. Uh, I know that TMZ reported in what seemed like the most fake report I've ever seen in my life that Ronda was not going to be there because Ronda informed the interviewer who was struggling to remember Royal Rumble as the name of the pay-per-view that she was off going to be filming a movie uh, and she wouldn't be back till mid-February. I think that's a red herring, that whole thing's fake, and that she will be the 30th entrant, and I think she is going to win the Rumble match throwing out Asuka. Now, before anybody panics, Asuka would still remain undefeated. She's never been pinned or anything like that. So she would still be able to, you know, to carry that around uh, for the sake of marketing. Uh, but this would build towards Ronda versus Charlotte. Um, that's where I'm picking. I also toggled, you know, bouncing between the idea of somebody else from Raw winning it. Because I think it was going to be someone from Raw and it wasn't going to, in my head, it wasn't going to be Asuka. I was thinking maybe we got some sort of, like, situation where Asuka was eliminated through, uh, I don't know, perhaps Ronda would have came in earlier and got thrown out and she would have attacked and blah, all that chaos. But I think that uh, it's going to be Ronda Rousey that wins and uh, Asuka will be the last one eliminated and uh, Ronda Rousey will win uh, and go on to face Charlotte. Now for the men's rumble, uh, this one is a tough one to predict. Reason being... There's like five or six names this year, I feel, that could technically line up. Uh, case in point, you could have Roman Reigns win this. Uh, it would make sense. He would go against Brock Lesnar. Uh, you could have Finn Balor win. He's honestly on a push, and you could make a storyline. You still would be able to add Roman into that. Or you could have Finn switch shows and, and fight AJ, because that would be an amazing match. And I personally would mark out hard over that booking. Um that what a, John Cena is always somebody that you can have win. Also, Randy Orton, even though I don't like it, you could have him win it. Um, I think in the end, we'll still we'll, we'll save that. Um, entrant number one, I think it's gonna be Elias. I think Elias is gonna come out. He's gonna give us a song about how he's gonna win the Rumble, and it'll be interrupted by somebody else for the second. Uh, I've seen over on another wrestling channel, uh, far bigger than mine, uh, they did a fantasy booking of it, and I really liked their fantasy booking because it was Elias first, and then number two was uh, going to be uh, Aiden English. And then, <laughs> so they'd like interrupt each other with singing, but they would this would take so long that the number three entrant would come out, who was the honky tonk man, and demanded his song be played. Um, Really good fantasy booking in that portion. I don't think anything like that's going to happen. I do think Elias is going to be number one, and they very well could do it in English, number two. But I think I think Elias will start out number one. Uh, and then my number 30 entrant. I think this could be where we actually see Dolph Ziggler show back up. Uh, he, he hasn't been around for a while. It would be an interesting choice. Um, it, some years it's a big name. Sometimes it's you know, been like Triple H or John Cena or something like that. Uh, other years, it's gone to, like, Biggie Langston before he was, like, the Biggie we know. So, it, I mean, it it doesn't always have to be someone big. Uh, I think this will be a pretty decent pop if they were to do it this way, but um, that's if they don't have him go against Bobby Roode earlier in the night. So this could be uh, a bad pick on my decision, and like, on my end, rather, uh, to make this decision and pick Dolph Ziggler, but we'll see. 
So I think when it comes down to it, Roman Reigns will be the last person eliminated by the one who wins the championship. Because WWE will kind of be trolling us with like, oh, it's the big dog Roman. And we know some of you fans don't like him, even though he's kind of the guy we're putting our future with. Where he's going to be our next Cena. Even though there's a hardcore group of fans that don't like him, we're going to make you think it's going to happen. And then relieve you all by letting Shinsuke Nakamura uh, come out on top. So my choice for the Men's Royal Rumble winner is Shinsuke Nakamura. This will lead him to go on against AJ Styles, which again, I think will be phenomenal booking. But who do you think will be in the Royal Rumble? Do you have any guesses of who might be surprise entrants that I didn't name? You know, do you do you expect the like my friend John that the Brooklyn Brawler might be the 30th entrant? Hopefully you guys have more of a better head on your shoulders than him, but if not, feel free to leave comments like that and back his decision. I'll never stop you guys from being crazy and making predictions. That being said, I've been Captain Solomon. You guys are awesome. Royal Rumble was this Sunday, and I can't wait. I'll see you guys in the next video.